Alright folks, today I have a great Weebless video for you because a question that I get a lot is what is the best Weebless settings? So today we're going to take a look at my custom settings so you can see why you should adjust it and how you can use it to get the smoothest footage out of your Weebless. So all this in this video. Here we go. So let me walk you through the settings and some of the basics of why it is important that you adjust some of these settings. All right. First off, let me show you what the different axes does if you don't know what they do. I'll just put it into sleep mode. See? There. The first axis you have is the tilt axis. That is this way. Then you have the pan axis, that is this one, and then there is the roll axis, which is this one. All right, now we got that. Let's take a look at the settings. So when you power up the gimbal, it is in pan follow mode. And if you want to tune the motors, all you do, you go into the settings, you go to motor, and then you can auto tune the Weeble S. And this is a very good feature because it auto corrects the balance from the camera up here to the Weeble S and it actually does a very good job. But if you want to adjust your own settings, you go down to custom. I have my parameters a little bit higher than what the um, auto-tune gives me, and I have it set to 56, I have it on 66 on the roll, and on the pan I have it on 80. So that is the numbers that I use, but it's really close to what the, um, the auto-tune actually does it. So there's one very important thing you have to know if you want to save your custom settings. You have to auto-tune the gimbal first before you go in and adjust your custom settings. If you don't do that, the custom settings won't be stored when you power on and off the gimbal. If you, for example, have chosen a one of the levels, let's say medium, and you then go and adjust your your custom settings and then power down the gimbal when you didn't power it up again it will take the settings from the level instead of your custom settings I hope that they will change this in the next firmware but just remember auto tune it first then set your custom settings and you're all good if you auto tune the gimbal it will only adjust the motor settings it will not adjust any of the other settings like speed smooth and depth dead band. Those will stay <laughs> perfectly fine as you adjust it. All right, so the speed setting, what is that? Control is the joystick. How fast do you want the gimbal to move when you move the joystick? I want my gimbal to move very slowly, uh, so I have it set to 25 on all of the parameters. If you want it faster, you can just bump up those numbers and the gimbal will move faster using the joystick. All right, on the speed, we have one more option, and that is the follow rate. And what does that actually mean? Mean? mean. That means uh, the speed of the gimbal. How fast do you want the movement of the gimbal to be? Yes. So on mine here, you can see I have the tilt to 40. I got the roll at 80, and then I got the pan at 45. So try them out and adjust them so it'll fit for your needs 100%. Then we get the smooth settings. What does that do? Let me show you right here. The smooth setting is how smooth does the gimbal ease in and out of the movement that you do. And the reason for that being as high as it can be, I have mine set to 200 because I don't want a sudden stop if I stop the gimbal. I want the gimbal just to ease into that stop or ease out of it. So therefore I have the smooth settings to set to as high as I can, so 200 on all of those parameters. Then we got the last one, that is the dead band. And what does that do? The dead band means is how much time does it take for the gimbal to react when you are moving it in one of the directions. And I would like to have a bit of room uh, to work with when I am moving the gimbal around before it starts turning so i have the tilt to six got the roll at five and then the pan i have at eight because when you're when you're using the gimbal you're likely to kind of 
move it a bit to the side and you want some room in there so it won't start moving if you're doing a straight line or something like that. So that is the video about my custom settings of the Shoe and Weeble S and I will display them right here on the screen. But I've also made a PDF and the link is in the description so you can go and grab that. So last week I made a video about the glide cam and how you can combine this one with the Weeble S to make the Minity, the Weeble S Minity, which is pretty popular right now. But there was a couple of comments in that video about the micro jitters that were in some of the footage. And I think the micro jitters came because I hadn't adjusted the motor strength of the Weeble S correctly. So right now I'm working on a video about how to fix the micro jitters and to see if there's a difference between the micro jitters on the Weeble S and the Crane 3S. Let me get it. Yeah, the Crane 3S, which is a mighty gimbal. And will the bigger and beefier motors on the Crane 3S actually do a difference with the micro jitters uh, compared to the smaller motors on the Weeble S? Or is it just a question of adjusting the motor strength? But we'll have to see. I'm still working on it. And I think it's a fun comparison. And it's fun to see if the bigger motors actually do a difference. Okay guys, that is it. If you want to see more Weebless videos, of course I got a full series on that and I will link some of the videos down here so you can go and see that. And if this is the first time you're here, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. So that is it. I don't have any more for you guys today. All I just want to say now is stay creative and of course stay safe out there and if you can, Go out and shoot some dope videos. And the last thing, got any questions? Just shoot me down in the comments. See you next time. Bye.